They had to pick up and go out there and go from town to town, person to person. And they persevered and endured to be a witness. The apostles indeed should be the models that we look up to. They didn't have all of the things other than the knowledge of God, the good news of what's in the Bible, and to go out there and just share that with people. Touch people's lives and plant seeds. But what exactly does witnessing for Christ mean? How does the Bible define it? Well, the Bible, if you go into the Bible, the book of Acts is a wonderful reference for witnessing. It talks about witnessing a lot. How the Christians did it in the past. How the apostles did it in the past. Unless we have a clear understanding of these things, we are likely to deviate from the path that they set, those that have done it before us. We might do it the wrong way. We might be a bad witness. Mm. We might say, I'm a Christian, I'm a good person, but based on what we do and say, we're not being a very good witness for the Lord sometimes. Mm. In a court of law, Witnesses are brought in to tell what they know about the case in question. When we are called to, to the witness stand, and I've experienced this, I've had a couple years ago out to Chicago, and I was called to testify on behalf of a client, we're sworn in, and we place our left hand on the Bible, we lift up the right, fingers are pointing where? Towards heaven. And we are commanded to swear that the testimony we're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Okay. So in this country, in a court of law, we're putting our hand on the truth in the Bible. And we're swearing that what we are about to say is indeed the truth. What about atheists? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. I'd like to see an atheist be called up to the stand. Yeah. Okay. So we, our testimony is given about what we have seen or about what we've heard uh, about the case. And typically, they're going to bring in more than one witness, at least two, to give credibility to the story. Just like when we're going out you know, evangelizing or you're going out door to door. Two, to give credibility to the story. When you're on that witness stand, it's really a very serious thing. It's a matter of legal record. They're taking that down, what you're saying, word for word. And based on your testimony, that person is either going to get off or you're going to be convicted. So it's got to be taken very seriously when you're on a witness stand. If you're on a witness stand and you display a lackadaisical or a flippant attitude or whatever, you can be held in contempt and you can be punished for that. Kind of like if we take a lackadaisical or a flippant way of witnessing for God. We're not doing it the right way. We're doing the wrong things. We're going to be punished for that. So how does a believer... Properly witness for the Lord. To answer this question, let me call our attention to the Lord's last words to his disciples before he ascended back into heaven. And this is again found in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, But you shall receive power, ability, the, 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 the wherewithal, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. We have to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. So when the Holy Spirit has come upon us, we have that power. And he says, you shall be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the very bounds of the earth, as we talked about. So we're all commanded to be a witness. But we can't do that by ourselves. We need to be born again. We need to have the Holy Spirit with us in order to do that. Now, notice the Lord didn't say, go out to some soul-winning seminar or go out to some, you know, rally around the clock kind of a thing. Get all pumped up to be a witness. He didn't say that. 
He said, invite the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you should have the encouragement to go out there and witness. He made a very positive statement by saying, you shall be my witness. Don't rely on a group. Don't rely on everybody else. You shall be my witness. Think about the spiritual dynamics behind this. That when that Holy Spirit is with us, focus on the power, the strength, and the courage that we receive with that. If we don't have that Spirit with us, we become lackadaisical Christians. Yeah, we believe in God, and we go through the motions. Do we really believe? Because if we really believed in terms of what we're supposed to do, he says, you shall be my witness. So if we really believe, we would take his words to heart and say, you know what? Today I better go out and witness for him, because that's what he's telling me to do. We are witnesses 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks out of the year for life. You need to understand that and consistently keep it in mind. Because there is that real danger, as I said before, of becoming a poor witness. The Holy Spirit gives the believer power to witness. Witness to the lost souls. During Bible study earlier, Sherry brought out the, the, uh, the shepherd's story. And the flock. And that one sheep becomes the lost soul. How that shepherd is going out. Find that lost soul. We are shepherds for the Lord to go out and find that lost soul. We, they're in our lives every day. God presents opportunity every day for us to see a lost soul. Are we taking advantage of the opportunity to invite the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and say a little prayer at a time and say, God, let that Spirit be with me. Give me the courage. I want to touch them a little bit. Tell me what to say. I don't know what to say. But enlighten me with the right words that I can touch this person with. We need to also have a certain reverence for God when we are witnessing. And not just be cavalier about it. But the fact that, you know, we don't just take Jesus' name and use it lightly. But to give reverence behind that name when we are witnessing for him. In today's world, we are all tempted by the devil to live a life of sin. And those who are weak are unable to resist temptations. We are in darkness. So the people in darkness need somebody to tell them about the Word of God, to share the light. People that are Christians can be in darkness. We might know a fellow Christian that's in darkness. Let's go out and witness to them, encourage them, talk to them, fellowship with them. The Apostle John had a goal. His goal was to be a witness and that all men might come to trust in Jesus. All men might come to know Jesus. That was his mission in life. I feel that when I go out into the world and God gives me opportunities, he gave me this new career, to say, you know what, I want you to travel around. He gave us the ability of, of quick transportation to fly me from here to there. The apostles had to walk. Mm -hmm. He flies me from here to there to touch the life of somebody that I don't know, a perfect stranger. Do you have the courage to go out and go up to a perfect stranger and witness to that? If you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and have been born again, but have been very lukewarm in your spiritual walk with Him, that's what happens to us. You need to ask Him for forgiveness and for renewal. You may need to ask for that renewal every day. Amen. Because there's so much that surrounds us that puts us back in into the, I'm uh, just lukewarm. Being lukewarm isn't being on fire yep. and having that burning fire within you. Being lukewarm is, okay, you know. Be on fire. Be aware of the people that he is presenting to us. 
share the love. Sharing the love and just maybe being sympathetic to them or having a kind word to them is a way of witnessing. So if we ask for renewal, he will instantly forgive you. Just ask him for the renewal. Get the fire back in. Fill your heart with the joy of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then you will want to begin that daily walk of prayer and to be a witness that he wants us to be each and every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen.